I thought we'd come along to the Botanical Gardens just to give you a little bit of a demo on uh, how I shoot flowers and uh, what we do to uh, get the best out of uh, something floral and something pretty stunning really. Um, this is a fantastic display and we're, we're not the, uh, the only photographer here at the moment. Um, there's the famous Peter Bush over there taking photos of the tulips as well. So we must be in the right place. Uh, I've got my little um, squirty bottle just to, to sort of freshen things up and get a few little droplets going and uh, it becomes a centre of interest that way, it becomes, um, adds to the, the, the flower and we've got uh, white tulips here which um, are beautifully backlit and uh, that's what we're going to try and um, achieve today and try and get something that's uh, a little bit um, unusual and a little bit wonderful. With uh, flowers quite often we're using macro lenses on tripods uh, with the camera on the tripod but I actually like my 18 to, to 250mm lens I think it's a fantastic lens it's not quite a macro but it just gets you close enough and it's, it's when it's fully extended um, the background gets blown out um, well not blown out but the depth of field you can handle that and it uh, focuses attention on the on the flower especially especially when you've controlled your depth of field and it's a shallow depth of field and you're working around um, f5 sixth so that you've got no um, depth of field behind and no depth of field in front it's purely and simply the flower so I'm just going to get down here and we'll just give that a little bit more and uh, just come in here a little bit and we're dealing with um, with white so I have underexposed by a stop and what I'm getting here is actually a really really lovely repetition behind too with my primary tulip which is this one here and my secondary tulip which is this one here and um, just in getting in close and on your knees you can see that things right close up and some of the, the things that you can clear off like spiders webs spider web which when you start to enlarge um, you do have a little bit of a problem with and you're not wanting to, to, to do too much in the in the digital side afterwards so I'm trying to get the background not sharp just the flower so I, I'm at 1250 at f6.3 so I should be able to stop the motion at that that really should stop the motion and I'm going to shoot this in isolation so I'm not shooting the the flower behind and I'm just going to try and get myself beautifully sharp and that's a lovely shot see how close I can get with this lens I can get really really quite close and I pick up all the detail in the tulip and all the little droplets as well and it's fantastically stunning and perspective is good too and I'm just getting a little bit more I'm getting a few little highlights just little fractions of moves uh, help you they really really help you isolate and get rid of things that will isolate the subject and also get rid of highlights and shadows that you don't really want so I'm just gonna pop in here and this is a really lovely perspective and I'm just gonna come down here again and for those of you who think that I'm a smarty and I've got a big camera well I reckon that you can do it with one of these as well if you've got the right little piece of equipment and this is just a little um, Canon it's um, a compact and Canon's compacts tend to have really really good lenses um, checking to see that that my lens is um, clean which I tend to try and do before any shot um, I'm just going to pop it on its macro mode these cameras tend to um, shoot in macro mode when they are at their, their widest angle and they shoot best at that and you can get closest but you do get a wide angle look and that's totally different to the tally look that I'm looking for on my larger camera so you know like I quite often work in tandem with, with two p different pieces of equipment and it's quite handy because uh, you know the difference is the difference basically and that shot that I just took just then um, was a phenomenal shot and it just went straight down the row here with this um, tulip in white beautifully exposed and all the other little tulips behind it and you just have to tilt it just a little bit um, because what you don't want coming up is the red tulips in the background being a distraction it just goes to show 
what you can do with a little camera. Uh, it doesn't need to be big like that, but little, and you can um, obtain some fantastic results. And also, perspective is great, you know, shooting down. Um, but I just think that this is, this is a, um, a great situation to show that, you know, big camera, small camera, it's what, six inches behind the lens, it's your, your um, heart and, and mind, and a little bit of expertise, and every time you come out, you learn something more about where the light's um, coming from, uh, your shutter speeds, your exposures, um, what ISO to use, that sort of stuff. And, and incidentally, I'm on my lowest ISO, I'm on 200 ISO. That will give me um, fantastic quality if I want to enlarge it up. There'll be no grain in these photos. Uh, my white balance is set to sunlight, because it is. I have um, one, one stop of, of underexposure on my exposure compensation, because it is so bright. And I want to pick up detail in the shadows and also in the highlights. So that, that's pretty important to me. Uh, and as I said, the depth of field I'm focusing on here. I don't want anything here. And I definitely don't want anything distracting in the background. So you know, use your knees, you know, like sometimes, ah, oh, that's beautiful. And sometimes you get lucky and you just get yourself into a position and there's no distractions in the background. And other times, for the life of me, I cannot get it right and I'm having to move and just subtly look around and there it is. Normally these have a variable different um, squirty thing. So you can do a, a fine spray or you can do something that's sort of a little, whoopsie, we'll do it that way. Like that down there somewhere. And you can avoid yourself actually having to go into the garden and wrecking things to get things. So I'm just squirting one just to a little way along and what I'm aiming to do this time is to to get a little bit of, of foreground out of focus, the background out of focus and hopefully the tulip looking beautifully fresh, the one that I've squirted. So we'll just see how we, we manage that and that looks pretty good. So you know it's setting the tulip that I'm squirting apart from all the others actually. And so that's creating a, a difference again. You've got to be a good shot here. Whoops. They always said that the wolves were good at water games. We're back with our tulips. And we've got a little macro on here. And I'm just going to size things up. And it's a fixed lens this time. And that's good. Because um, you can get them real, real close. And you don't have to be mucking around and wondering where you're going to go next, as you do with a zoom, you've only got one way of going. This macro is fantastic, it gets me in as close as, and I'm just looking for a little cross section, a little bit of light to help me out here, and I'm on the tripod because I'm actually wanting to do stuff with, or well, photos, I shouldn't say stuff, with maximum depth of field, which is at f22, and I would assume shooting this way that my shutter speed would be quite low, even though it's quite bright. So this will keep things still. And I'm also wanting to do uh, shallow depth of field on say f2.8, uh, where because it is a macro lens, your focus is quite critical, so it's better that it is on a tripod. And you're looking for something that is really quite beautiful and quite subtle. While I'm doing this, I'm also looking around at other blooms just to see w which is the most perfect and what is being lit right. Because at this time of night, your sun is continually moving and we're going to lose it shortly over under the hill. And uh, that's not going to be a good thing from a lighting perspective. But if we can get through as many of these as possible and we get the right bloom, well then that will be neat. And I'm also looking for insects, believe it or not, aphids, things like that, that you can photograph. Um, but bear, bearing in mind that this is the Wellington City Council's flagship botanical gardens, um, sometimes they are hard to come by. Uh, so no insects here today. I'm wanting to light just in here, and my problem is that there's specular highlights in the background that I hate, and that are distracting, and that don't set this in isolation. So it's just a matter of just moving a little way, and hopefully, uh, nope. So we might lift our tripod up just a little bit higher. And that is infinitely better and controllable. So we'll just see what happens here. I'm just going to do a little click. 
And I'm gonna put a little bit of water on here too. Now, just a little bit. Nothing too major. And click that off as well. And we're dealing with very, very shallow depth of field here. So I'm only focusing just in that little bit there. And all this little bit out here is, is beautiful and soft and, and, and not sharp. We're at a 20, 20th of a second at F32. Now this is where things become a little bit interesting in that we've got a little bit of a breeze and a 20th of a second um, there'll be movement and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wait a few seconds and hopefully you know, we're very calm here in Wellington we are calm most of the time and there you go and the good thing about the sun going down just at the moment is that it's darkening off our background and that's fantastic now I've just noticed that little droplet just in there and we're just about to have our last light here and this is good. And uh, there we go. I'm just going to roll my wheel around because we're, we're actually not looking for a lot of depth of field here. I'm just focusing on that little droplet there. Now, I think a little bit of zooming on the autofocus. And that was 200th at F5 with the ISO at, at 200 also. And you see, we've, just in the last few minutes, we, have, we are losing our, our specular lighting. And we've got lovely soft light now. But we've still got some tone and we've still got a third dimension. <coughs> and this is still really, really pleasing. It's just a totally different shot of the same flower in different lighting conditions. So, so this is more a wraparound sort of effect. We're going to do this as well. And I know exactly what I'm going to do with this afterwards. Now, sometimes you're... In this sort of light, your macro lens, when it's on autofocus, goes zooming in and out. It goes zzz, 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 and it doesn't hold focus. And what you have to do then is manually focus. We do do these things manually these days. We can. Manual is not a bad thing sometimes. And we tend to forget we've got auto this and auto that. And we forget that our cameras do have manual as well because it gives you total, absolute total control of what you're doing. So I'm just going to come in a little bit closer. Magnificent, and it's just that little bit of detail there, and it just filters off into the background. And also, in this sort of light, I now can work quite effectively, um, even though the light's gone, I can still work with my 200 ISO, um, which is quality. Um, we haven't got much of a breeze. I'm going to do a little uh, vertical shot here. I'm just going to tip this round. Now, sometimes, if I want to get depth, a huge amount of depth of field in this situation, I will either use a cable release but most times because I'm not dealing with something that's a, a tremendously moving subject um, I'll use the clock on the camera so I just move the dial around and it's the self timer and essentially I can leave the tripod by itself and I'm gonna once I get it right I'm just gonna push the button ping let it go by itself I'm not touching it at all and I'll just check yep we're good click and I didn't push the button at the time that the shutter went off but nor did that was there any movement in the camera so fantastic I'm sure that that will be a tack sharp image and I'll just come up here and I'll just have a look at that yeah not bad at all